Hello and welcome to the Talking Wealth Podcast. I'm Dale Gillam, the Chief Analyst here at Wealth Within. And today, we're going to talk about an exciting topic, and that is trading for a living. But before we get into the topic, I need to introduce my fabulous co-host, Janine Cox. How are you? Fantastic. How are you today? I'm super fantastic. And I'm really interested in this topic because we get asked this question a lot, Mm. you know, and people want to know um, how they can sack their boss, don't they? Well, they do. They. How many people go, I want to trade, I want to, you know, sit at home and trade for a living, blah, blah, blah. They do all of that. And it's mm. one of the most common questions that I get asked. Mm. And I know, you know, our team says, oh, when are you going to do a podcast on trading for a living? Because yeah. we get so many phone calls from people going, oh, you know, I want to stop work, blah, mm. you know, and sack the boss, you know. It wouldn't be nice. I, you know, I, one day I went into a boss. I don't know whether I've ever told you this. I went to an old boss and I said, boss. And he goes, yes. And I said, I think I've become overqualified for any position you have available. And he went, what? I said, I'm resigning. <laughs> and he's like, what? Okay. Yep. I said, I've got to go. You and me don't see eye to eye. So I'm off. Mm. Um, and I handed him my resignation for whenever it was for a couple of weeks notice or whatever else. But to me, that's an exciting time when you can choose to do mm. that. But a lot of things we get from people is, you know, they, as soon as they start Googling stock market or trading, they just get bombarded with ads on mm. Google. Every time they go to a web page, there's more ads. And they're generally ads like things are you tired of working a nine to five mm-hmm. job and looking for long, long-term long financial freedom? Or, you know, do you want to earn a living from home? Or mm. things like you want to earn $200 a day or $500 a day. It's really easy. Just click here. Do they work those? Ads? And it's all CRAP. You go to, you click on uh, some of the times I've touched the ads and you go to them and I'm like, crap, mm. what those, some of those sites are like little apps or they're just, you know, all they, nowadays you're seeing ones where they're using famous People. Oh, that's terrible. You know, like the last one I saw was, you know, like uh, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. You know, mm-hmm. like I was, I was on Instagram, and I don't use Instagram. I was just looking at. We've started our Instagram account, so if you've got mm-hmm. Instagram, you can get wealth within on Instagram. You know, and I was flicking through this Instagram app that they put mm-hmm. on my phone, and I went, "Crap ad, crap ad, crap ad, crap ad." Oh, Elon Musk. And then I started reading, go scam, and this mm-hmm. is what people are seeing, but. Trading the stock market can really be a lucrative way to generate income, can also replace your income so you don't need to work nine to five, mm. have a job. So that's today we're going to discuss what I would call a five-step process, I suppose. We're going to dis- yep. really discuss the five steps to help somebody transition from having a job now to moving into creating cash flow, capital gains, and ultimately having that security and freedom that they can say to their boss – I think I'm overqualified for any position you have available. Over the years, I mean, I'm just thinking mm. back to some of the people who have called us and just to have a chat. I mean, we don't have mm. that many chats these days because we just, you know, how do we find the time to fit everybody in? However, this guy, he'd actually been given a redundancy package mm. and he said he'd been offered it and he said, look, Janine, I'm not sure if I should take it yet. I don't know. And I wasn't influencing him one way or another, but... Um, Initially, I guess I could have because I said to him congratulations when he told me that he, he's got this redundancy offer. Mm-hmm. And it was quite significant yeah. as well because he'd been with the company for 25 years. That's a long time. To be with anyone. Long I've been doing and it was with a big corporate, so they're usually quite generous yeah. as well. Yep. So, you know, he got picked off and, you know, I, he said, I think I'm going to take it, but I'm just wanting to sort of understand some of the aspects around trading if I was to go and do that now because he's... He'd been investing using yep. our strategies, but more medium to long term and wanted to Which is fine. get an understanding of what he had to prepare for short mm-hmm. time. I said, well, half of your problem is already been has a solution because somebody's just handed you a big paycheck. So it's not like you have to build up your bank account like a lot of people might have to in order to be, prepare for that. Well, some people think to trade for living that they need to have a million dollars in the bank mm-hmm. so they can give out their job or... $2 million in the bank or $500,000 bank, they think these big amounts. And I said, mm. well, if you could make $5,000 a month from a $5,000 bank account, mm. could you live on that? And it's not, and and they go, well, how do I make money out of that? And you can. We have traders that have leveraged accounts mm. that are using $5,000 margins and, and pulling in five mm. grand, 10 grand a month, sometimes 30 grand in a month, sometimes. 500 in a month, but overall they they actually make a living out of their mm. trading. And anything I always call it, it's about one of the things I talk about is you just learn how to move the decimal point one place to the to the 
to the right. Because mm. if you can make 10% on a consistent basis over, let's say, over three months, then you can move the you le- leverage and move the decimal point one place to right and make 100% every three months. The thing you the haven't process. said yet is the advantage over being mm. able to use that leverage and that vehicle that allows you to use, and I'm not mentioning the vehicle just yet. I'm keeping that a secret right now. Is the fact that they in markets like what we've seen, okay, mm. we've had the market going up recently, mm. but prior to the number of months up, we had months going down. Now, this happens at any time on our market. You could have the mm. market moving down for six months yeah. and then you can't make anything going long during that time yeah. in most stocks. Mm. But when we're looking at what people can do mm. once they learn how to trade the market up or down, that's what you're talking about. Then they can more consistently make that return if they know how to flick the switch and be thinking in reverse. Absolutely they can. But, you know, to me is there's a process that you have to go through and every trader has mm. to go through it because very few people get to trade for a living without going through a process like this. There's very few people that just luck their way into it. Mm. And generally they're very short term anyway, like through the like the tech boom bust. You know, I know people that were trading during the tech boom and thought they were geniuses and, yeah. you know, and I, and, and I think I've told stories on this podcast, you know, with one guy I spoke to, he went to his mum who paid off her house, borrowed as much as money as he can on their house and within two weeks the the, the whole tech industry had just melted down and Tragic. his mum was mm. left with this big debt on her house and he was bankrupt basically. Mm. And heaps of stories like that through boom-bust cycles. So, But prior to that he thought he was a genius. He was trading full-time and making money. I've met people that have made a million dollars. Yeah, it's funny how the market can actually tell you what the reality of the situation is. Oh, the market at any doesn't time. care how good looking you are or how smart you are. The market doesn't just go straight on a straight line up forever. Correct. So but, there's going to be times when it's going to yeah. pull back and then you have to be prepared for that. And yeah. I think that's what a lot of traders, when they start to understand what happens in the market, they have a big question mark about that. Mm. So, you know, if I am going to trade for a living, how am I going to trade? through those times. And and there's a number of things that they could consider really. Mm. They don't, if they're going long, they can just ride it out, wait mm. and stay out of the market for a while. But provided they've got a big enough bank account built mm. up, then they're fine, but they've got a plan for that. The the other mm. side is being able to trade the market up and down like we were just talking. Well, that was what I was about to get to. It's like, unless you've traded an up market, down market, and a sideways mm. market, you're not really an experienced trader in my book. And so markets change all yeah. the time. 2013, 14, through that period, the market was sideways largely mm. for quite mm. a long time. Mm. Uh, we've had some really volatile pullbacks like we saw in the GFC. We've seen it in the correction mm-hmm. that happened in the wake of the GFC yep. with the tsunami. We've seen these big pullbacks with the Royal Commission coming in. We've seen that happening in um, the COVID correction. Yep. So the, the more recent one that we've seen has not been so um, I guess you'd say sharp. It's yep. been more of a steady decline, which is a more normal move on our market. Mm. But that's the sort of pullback they've got to be prepared for. But if they were prepared for some of those, they could make a lot of money in a very short space of time Correct. with the market falling. But you know what? The the biggest words, sorry, the most satisfaction I get or the words that give me the most satisfaction from people. And what's that? When they tell me I'm sacked. <laughs> And it's like, I know it sounds strange, but how many people that we've mentored and helped trade the stock market that we've said to them, my job, your job is to be teachable and learn how to trade. Mm. That's what you're asking us to do. My job is to make myself redundant mm. because when I've made myself redundant or we've made ourselves redundant, mm. then the student doesn't need us anymore and That's they're true. getting what they need. And I said, my, the best emails I get is when Dale, it says, to hi, Dale, you're you sacked. <laughs> and I've had numerous men of those and I remember – a couple of years ago, I was caught up with a few students. Um, I went up to northern New South Wales and I drove mm. during COVID. I caught one of those, you know, little rays of sunshine to just escape Melbourne, so I just did it. Um, but I caught up with a few students and one of them was a, was a plasterer mm-hmm. and I had lunch with him and um, I'd never met him before. I just said, I just said, hey, I'm doing this. I'm going to be in these places. Anybody want to catch up for coffee? And about a month later... After, because we'd been chatting about what he was doing and what his plans were. A month later, he emailed me and he said, Dale, you're sacked. Mm. He said, I've decided to put my work boots in the bin. Mm. He said, I'm trading for a living now and I'm so excited. And he's, and that was a couple of years ago, and he's still trading full time mm. right now. And to me, that gives me the satisfaction. But I want to get into obviously, we've got the five mm. um, step process I want to talk about. But first, I want to talk about some of the 
little bit of the mist because, I mean, a lot of people think that in order to make or replace their income mm. or to make enough income, um, they really do need to do things like um, day trade. Yeah. And I think their whole idea of, you know, sacking their boss or trading for a living is day trading. Mm. So I want to get... I know my thoughts on it. People, people, a lot of people know my thoughts on it, but I don't want to start with your talk, thoughts on day that trading. That they don't need to do it. Yeah, or whether mm. they do or they don't, whether that's a real or whether that's a false Some assumption. Some people like it. You know, there are people that I don't know whether that's just, just solely because they don't know what else they could do or whether it's just some sort of um, a need to be active in the market all the time. So what would you say that was? Oh, look, there are people that have that um, core belief in them or that core motivator in them is probably a better way of saying it, where they like to be challenged mm. and they go out and be challenged and they love that thrill of the win and the chase to win. Mm. And those people will tend to day trade because they get to trade often and put themselves in that position. And that's sort of like that gambling mentality. I'm not saying they're gamblers. Mm -hmm. If they've got knowledge, then they're not gamblers, but they go out there and go, I like to place trades every single day and I love that thrill of winning mm -hmm. because I've beaten the market or I've done it right. Yep. And so, but there are other, a lot of people day trade who are trying to, you know, replace their income and make a lot of money, but then they don't have the knowledge. They're the serious mm. gamblers that, that, that you do see out there. Um, Look, I mean, I guess it's all relative, isn't it? Because I've seen people who trade very, um, you know, so they trade certain size positions to mm. get small wins regularly and have told me that it's working for them. So they're getting an income every day and every week mm. as the market's unfolding and because they're not in the market for very long, they've reduced their risk and they uh, are happy doing it that way. Now, I mean, a little bit more structure behind that could mean that they're not trading so often. Yeah, but the thing is so when that, you're trading every day, you're subjecting yourself to a lot of emotions every day too. Mm. So often, so what you're saying is more li more than likely at some point they're going to end up doing things that are well, going to go against what they're well, aiming to achieve. Well, it can because you get, if we go into the, to behavioural finance and I did a bit of a, I did a recording for Talking Wealth on behavioural finance or we mm. did one on behavioural finance, sorry. Yep. And I've done a bit of podcasts on it before but uh, – People get into these cognitive biases when they're talking. If they have some wins for a period of time, let's say the market's bullish, mm. and they're pulling up two, three, four, five, six hundred dollars a day or a thousand dollars a day, mm. the market's bullish. But then they get, can get overconfident and then move their decimal point. Yeah, I and guess because it's much money. harder to sit up and actually mm. have the bird's eye view when you're in it every day, isn't mm. it? How do people do that? That's the question, isn't it? Well, because it's about if having a proper strategy and process and all those things we're going to talk about in a minute. But I just wanted to get into the myths of you don't need to day trade because mm. if the goal is to stop working and earn your living from the stock market, <laughs> does that mean replacing one job for another job? Because mm. J-O-B means just over broke or journey of the broke. Yep. If you work, if you're not, I constantly, and you've constantly as well, I mean, we've been doing this for more than two decades and we constantly mm. say to people, have multiple streams of income. And I've been yep. creating multiple streams of income since I was like 18 or 19, as soon yeah. as I started work, I started working on getting multiple streams of income because mm. it just reduces risk. But what is trading for living? Because that was the title of the podcast, trading for living, mm. not trading for a job. So what's and the difference? And that's a huge distinction. Mm. So you're actually trading to replace the income rather than trading your time mm. from one area to another. So let me ask you a question. If you could make a hundred, if you're, you're replacing your job meant you're going to earn a hundred grand a year. You have to replace mm. that. If you made a hundred grand in one trade, or a hundred grand in a hundred trades, which was better? A hundred grand in one trade, mm. Mm. <coughs> easily. And then you could just go on holidays. I mean, I've worked with a few guys who they were traders, and their whole plan was to eventually take three months off at the end of the year. So. You know, I said to the, the guy who was doing it because he, he came to us to do the course because he needed more structure. So he was already doing a lot of short-term trades and he was leveraging himself we up. We get that. Mm. And occasionally he would bomb out and then he would find it really hard to get back into it without doing something against 
what his whole plan was. So he just told me a few things that had happened. And then I said to him, well, you know, have you stopped doing what you were doing before? And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, before you had the mindset that you were going to just trade for a while until you got to a certain amount of money and then stop trading and have a break. And you've stopped doing that because mm. when you start learning new things, you, you, you get really keen on what you're learning and trying to see how different things work in the marketplace. And, and, it, and you've got to do that research and get that um, groundwork behind you. But then he forgot what was actually working for him as well. So I know you say with some people they need to just wipe the slate clean and forget what they've actually had before. They do, yeah. But I, but I thought that was a really good way of thinking because that mental break – for him, mm. of having that three months off actually allowed him to come back fresh and, and see things that he was doing that weren't helping him yeah. and to trade better. So my mind, you should only have your money in the market while it's at low risk mm. and you should only trade when it's conducive to profitable trading. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you should be in the market every single day. It doesn't mean you should make place a trade every single day or even no, every second right. day or every, every week. I mean, there have been some that I've spoken to and, and some ladies, believe it or not, mm -hmm. who were trading the market and taking a couple of hundred dollars out of the market each day mm -hmm. and thinking, well, this is working well for me and, and that's all fine. But then I said to them, well, what happens when it stops working? What are you going to do? Because they don't really have a proper strategy. It's just like, oh, well, look, I think the price for that stock's quite low now, so mm. I might just put some money into that and then see they're if just, I can they, make They tend to just jump onto a momentum, like if, let's say, zero's going up for mm. a couple of weeks, they just jump on zero for a day or two and watch it go up and then get out of it. It's mm. more That's all guess. It's, it's more guessing gambling rather than strategy and process. And the reason why they do it is because they don't trust themselves or the market and they yep. don't have rules, so they try and take little bits and get out. Look, but some, of them, not, some of the ones that I've spoken to. that's not going to achieve what we're wanting to do here. Trading well, for well, living is different than that. Yeah, I know, but some of the ones that I spoke to did have some sort of strategy they claimed, but it wasn't, it was very, very, um, I guess. Wishy-washy. Well, part of it was and part of it wasn't. So that there was part of it was based on um, Bollinger mm. Bands. So they were actually trading mm -hmm. the Bollinger Bands, which we know are lagging indicators. They are. And eventually, you know, you, it's going to be falling away and you're not even going to see it because yeah. the way that the indicator works mm. until it's too late. But um, so I'm not going to say that she, you know, she she had a start in the thinking that she had to have a str strategy and a process, but just not the right one. And it was, mm. and in the end, um, you know, she, this person ended up losing a hell of a lot of money. Yeah, they do. Through generally. this process. But that's because, where I was talking about the cognitive biases and mm, that behavioural finances. There's a lot in all of that of what happens with people as they start to make money on, on guessing and gambling and not necessarily knowing what they're doing. But I don't really sort of want to get into that to death because we've done mm. a few podcasts okay. on that. What I want to get into is obviously the, the top, top subject is trading for a living. It's not trading as a job like mm. I mentioned before. But what I'll, I want to mention is in our dirt cheap beginners course, our trading mentor course, which if anybody can't afford that, they shouldn't even be in the market. It's mm. that dirt cheap and constantly students pay for it in one trade easily mm. and and they pay for other courses but through their trading mentor course but the very 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 first lesson is we call it what's your why yep and to me that's what i'd ask people listening to this conversation is what is your why why are you looking at the stock market mm. what do you want to get out of it do you want to pull back on your job? Do you love your job? I find that people that don't like their job, once they start making money in the market, they turned out they actually love their job. <laughs> so they actually want to stay for a lot longer or they might, um, we've had so many traders that give up work and trade mm. full time and then they go, bored. I was really, I, I'm a bit bored because trading is easy. I'm making money, but I do want that interaction. So they'll start working part time mm. or they'll do contracting work. work. And others who were a bit bored with their job that getting paid for it. Once they start making out of the money, it takes the, it takes that whole, I have to work and mm. it gives them choice. I can choose to walk into my boss and say, well, hey, boss, I'm overqualified for any job you have available mm. anymore, or they can choose to stay and enjoy their job. Mm. And that changes their whole thinking around their, their job. That, and that's amazing. Isn't and that it? is amazing because to me that is trading for a living because yeah. you feel better and you have a better lifestyle. So I'd ask people to think about what's their why. Why mm. would they want to be in the stock market? Why do they want to trade? Well, look, I'll give outcome? you an example of um, this mm -hmm. guy that um, he had a, he's got a young family. Mm -hmm. And he's a tradesperson and he wanted to be able to spend more time with them. Yep. 
So, you know, he could have, if he could just work four days a week instead of five. Easy. You know, he could take a long weekend Easy. every now and again. And so that was his big motivator to, to give more time back to his kids. So many of our students want that. That was so strong in him that mm. he actually did succeed at that and our went back and was mm. working only four days. And then eventually over time we got him to a point where he was able to work three days a week. So many of our students do that. They slowly mm. pull back on their work and then they have a balance, yeah, don't they, and they have right. that work-life balance. But again, I mean, I don't mm. want to harp on day trading because mm. day trading is a myth in my book. Most day traders don't make money long-term and most day traders aren't successful long-term. And it's not necessarily a way to trade for living or replace Look, your Look, I think a lot of them realise that you've actually got to be in the market. There's more. You need more time in the market. And I... I Day trading is is anybody, to, to give people a definition, day trading is somebody who gets in and out of the market in the same day. Mm. It's not holding positions over three to five days or ten days. It's also somebody who likes to trade overnight. Like some people go, well, I work really hard on my job between nine and five, so I trade the FX market, market overnight or the US markets overnight. Like that's serious suicide, financial suicide mm. in my book because your body just can't cope with that. Mm -hmm. And 99% of people I meet who've done that, they generally burn out within months if they're max, young, not so much. Yeah, the older but they once, get, the faster they burn out. Yeah, once people hit 40, I think the clock starts ticking mm. and changing. But that's also not, that's not then trading for a living. Mm. You know, to me that's completely. I mean, I did that for a while, you know, with um, overseas stuff. I know. At night. And so, you know, you, you're you're awake until 1.30 in the morning sometimes. But mm. um, when you've had children, you do that anyway. So, you, you know, for someone who's had kids, I would say that they could probably much better adjust to that process than someone who who's never had a child before. It's still not something that you can do long term. Well, you don't have to do it every day. And that's the thing. Correct. If you you've got the right process and strategies, yeah. Yeah. But people do do it every mm. day uh, and that's the thing. So anyway, we talked a bit about day trading. Short-term trading is different than day trading though, isn't it? Short-term trading is different because it's a more of a mindset or mm. about trying to work out where – the best opportunities are that like really like people think short term trading is just being in a trade maybe a few days, weeks, months or whatever. But it's more about thinking mm. about how to get the best return out of a stock, more mm. so than more medium term, because medium term you might get some good runs on it. You're going to have upside and downside. But as we talk about it, you're aiming to get the safe piece of the rise in the middle of that rise rather mm. than trying to get in at, you know, the lowest possible point and out at the highest point. But mm. the the short-term trading is about working out consistently how do stocks move and where do you tend to get that. Now, it could be that someone has a really good medium-term strategy yep. and in part of that medium, when those medium-term rules trigger, it may be that that's the best point to actually get your short-term trading because, mm. you know, and if you can work it out over, over time that that's the case, then you've got the probability of that in your favour. Mm. To give people a bit of context, in our context, short-term trading is three months or less. But when people mm. start short-term trading, they think that they have to tra – so they'll try to back to short-term trades and there's a lot more of them, of course, Correct. right? So mm. it means that they've just created more time, more effort, they're trading more, they're making their broker happy but not necessarily getting a making better result because we've proven that time and time again mm. when we've challenged we've created people. created another job. To go away because you can get a better result with your medium term trades. But that's what I see but with FX traders all the time. It doesn't have to be that way if they think smarter about the short term no, trading process and what it is. It's not, it's, it's about trading less, not more, as you say. I so, find so many people are fearful of taking trades out for longer periods of mm. time. And that's, again, the cognitive biases they have when we're talking about behavioral finance. And I'm not going to get into that today, but. Short-term trading, Look, often I, people, I think, but often people think they need to short-term trade to trade for a living. And, now and you to know me, yourself, that's not true. You know yourself that when you're trading mm -hmm. your stocks and, you yeah. know, you have some stocks which tend to be more typical medium to longer-term yeah. opportunities and some that tend to be more short to medium Correct. term, right? So having that way of thinking the way you've got it is a good way of doing it because it's a more balanced mm. um, approach and therefore more defensive in terms of if the market changes. So if... If the long-term direction of the market changes and mm. you happen to be in a medium to long-term trade, you're going to have to say goodbye to that trade because mm. it's not going to go the way you want it to mm. ultimately. But if you're in a short-term trade as well, more than likely you're closing out that position before you're closing out the medium-term trade. And, you know, if you've got a good set of rules mm. and so you'll balance out the portfolio much better and make it 
less volatile overall. It may not. It may mean that some of the trades that you have, um, you know, with the shorter term trading might um, tend to go against you at times, but you're more likely to, when those bigger declines come in, have been able to lock away some more money in there. Mm. Okay, question. I want yes or no answer. To trade for a living, do you need to day trade? No. Next question. Same. Yes or no answer. To trade for a living, do you need to do short-term trading? Yes. Always? Not always. Okay. There's two strategies. Mm -hmm. One is a short-term tra trading strategy that takes money off the market yep. at a... Um, Regularly, and it may mean that you have a few trades a year or, or it may mm. mean you have a trade every six, eight, ten weeks, depending on how you've set the strategy up. Yeah. But the other person trading might th have actually thought about this and had the nows to think, right, my my idea is not to short-term trade, it's to trade to get an income. So therefore, how can I get that income out of something that I'm trading medium term, which is less work involved, mm -hmm. and then... Um, and get still get the same result. And that to find that out, the only way you can do that is to go and back test that and and see that you've, you're actually getting that result. That's what you're alluding to, isn't it? It's just not one way. No, and to you me, don't, it's, you don't have to be really short term about it. People have these misconceptions. Now, you know, to me, one of them, I remember so many phone calls I've had with people, and they go, "I want to trade blip, mm. whether it's options, whether it's FX, whether yep. it's short term day trading, blah 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 blah." There's multiple different. I want to trade blue mm. that I've had. And like, I'm talking hundreds of people. And I mm. go, my first question is, oh, okay, so why do you want to do that? And they go, I want to trade for a living. Because they or think some that that's answer what they need. of trading for a living. Mm. And I go, okay. So then I go, so what kind of return do you think you need to trade for a living? And some of them go, oh, I'd, yeah, I'd be great no if I, get, I could get 10%, sometimes 20%. Mm. Um, or how much money do you need to trade for a living? And, they, and they, they'll they give me some figure and I go, so my next question is, after I've got the answer is, so then why do you want to do that? Mm. And I had one guy, I distinctly remember it. He says, oh, you know, I want to trade options. I want, you need to teach me how to trade options. And I went, all that why, blah, blah, blah. Mm. And he goes, and I said, so what kind of return? He goes, 10%. I said, what, per month, per day, per week, per year? He goes, mm. oh, 10% per year. And I said, then why the hell do you need to trade options? That's right. And he went, what do you mean? I said, just buy blue chip stocks, you'll be fine. Mm. You know, if they're, they're, they're going to get blue chip stocks, top 20 stocks are going to give you 35 to 5.5% dividend yield. Mm. Plus over a 10-year period, they're going to average probably 7 to 15% growth per annum anyway. Mm. So any year you're going to get 10% or better just by buying and holding blue chip mm. stocks. If you learn how to trade, you're going to get more. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have these misconceptions about what they need to do to trade for a living. Because trade for a living doesn't, you know, trade for a living equals working 40 hours. It mm. doesn't, there's no equation to that. Trading for a living means just replacing your income in my book. Yep. Is that one trade a year? Is that 40 hours a week or 40 hours a year? Mm. What is that to you? Because that's where mm. it is, what is your why? Why are you trading and why are you wanting to do what you do? Is it spend more time with your family, travel more? Is it to have to build up your wealth? Is it to be able to give back to charity? What Has is anyone that ever is? come to you and said, have you had those people that have come mm. to you and said, I just want to, you know, be challenged and so Absolutely I want to trade? I had. Some people just trade because they love the challenge. So they those, don't need those the money. Those people might want to do it more often than they the do. ones that... And I don't have a problem with that because they go, I don't need the money, I just love the challenge. Yeah. And I don't have a problem with that. But if you're trying mm. to create an income, what is that to you? And mm. why do you want to do it? And how will that change your life? Mm. You know, I remember I was yesterday I was entering one of our, our students and one of the, you know, when they get to mentoring by you or me and, and the other team in terms of their trading, one of the questions is basically about why do you want to do this? Mm. And I said to him, there's not enough detail there because until you enact your emotions, you don't understand. It's that you, you'll get road humps or speed bumps in, mm. in your trading or you'll, you'll get that. And that's why most people give up. Because their why is not there. They don't articulate that. So mm. always, yeah, why true. do you want to day trade? Why do you want to trade for a living? So to me, there's a time frame that you need to commit around to that and then there's a whole lot of other things. Because one of the things I've learned a long, long time ago is you don't get until you give. So the only way to get something is to give something. Mm. And what I mean by that is you either have to give up your time, you have to give up your money, or you have to give up both. So if you want to learn, which is number one mm. in our process, and surprise, surprise, <laughs> edu get educated is number one in the process, and that always has to be number one. I mean, if 
Buffett mm. even says it, you know, the first thing you should do is get educated. Mm. You know, I don't know anybody, but it's generally the last thing most people do. Remember that there's mm. an old saying, you know, what, what a wise man does at the start, the fool does in mm. the end. Yes. And the wise man gets educated first, the fool gets educated last because mm. they've done it all the wrong ways because they're trying to be cheap. They don't want to give up something to get it. Mm. So they don't want to give up the time, but they also don't want to give up the money. And that's why YouTube is so many people go to the University of YouTube to learn trading and take 10 times longer than any of our students to get to the same point. Just think about this for a minute. So, yeah. you know, if people don't want to give mm. up the money, yeah, this is just a bit of, I'm just going to digress a little bit because we're talking stock market here, but mm. we also have a property market. People who invest in the Correct. stock market usually often filter that money from the stock market to the property market and they or they sw switch from properties to stocks depending on what the market's mm. doing. So the people who are in the property market, I mean, how do they then switch their thing? Because that's a really a long, for a lot of people in the property market, it's more a long-term game. Yes, it is. Right? Or medium or to long. How do they, if someone's in the property market, how do mm. they switch their thinking to such short, if they want to trade for a living, how do they switch their thinking to that? Well, there's not much difference between thinking about property and, and thinking about the stock market. There's mm. a still... If you're going to go and buy an investment property, what's the first thing you do? You start to educate yeah, yourself your on how to do that. You do your mm. research. Then you find the appropriate advisors and people to help you with all of that sort of stuff. And you learn about banks and loans mm. and structures Auctions. and you learn about financial structures, whether it's individual joint company, family mm. trust, all of that sort of stuff. You get into all of that. Mm. The tax part, you, you have to learn all that stuff. You just don't go wake up in the morning and go, Right, I'm mm. going to buy a house today. Shit, I'm going to buy an investment property today and you walk <laughs> walk walk up to the first real estate agent and go, bang, that's mm. the one I want. You mm. just don't do that because people look at it and go, well, that's a half million dollar investment or a million dollar mm. investment that I'm making. So they put a lot more importance on it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing that really irks me with people in the stock market is because you can trade for $500 or $1,000, they just disrespect the stock market so mm. much. Whereas if I said to them, you know, to me, you've got to invest half a mil. You've got to invest half a mil. Then they're going to take it seriously. Would, so yeah. to me, is, is and I was, remember I was chatting to somebody a couple of months ago and they were talking about exactly this subject. And mm. I said, mate, I said, don't make a decision based on who you are and where you are today. And they, what do you mean? I said, if you want to be a good trader, make the decision that a good trader would make. So think about where you're going to be in five years' time if you're educated, you're knowledgeable, and you're trading really well. What decision would that person make today? Mm. And they went, not sure. And they would, and I said, I can guarantee you, mm. they would say, get educated, because every single trader that we've ever taught that's really successful, what's the first thing that comes out of their mouth when I say, what would you advise somebody new to the market? They'll tell you to get educated, but Correct. they can't believe that they didn't do it sooner, or Correct. they just so they make their job they hard. Get. So get educated, because obviously, the first step to transition to anything, if you want to get a job. Mm. And you're, let's say you're an accountant and you want to become a, 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 um, an architect. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing you do? You have to go and do a course. Yeah. So why don't you do that in the stock market? Mm. And it's just too go, easy for people to access. Oh, just get my app and just hit go button. Mm. And they've or, made it even easier, haven't they? And they Gosh. make it even easier. So number one mm. is educate yourself because obviously you don't know what you don't know and there's a lot of myths and misconceptions about the market and especially around mm. trading uh, around trading for living, you know, trading for cash so, flow. So, you know, that's that one. And what mm -hmm. about the um, the one about when you're first starting out and you're, you've are you got to get into the market? Mm -hmm. Are you saying that you should do the education before doing a bit of paper trading? Because sometimes they can happen at the same time. Well, they can, but part of that should be part of your process anyway mm -hmm. because obviously people who get my book – um, and even when in our course, when we're in our diploma course, in module one, we're saying trust nothing, test everything. Mm. And I don't know how many times you and me have said it on podcast or live show, don't trust mm. us. Yes, we're experts. We know what we're doing, but don't trust what we say. Prove Play, it to yourself. Prove it to yourself. Because it's only when you prove it to yourself that you have the confidence it will work for you. Mm. Because so how many people do we get that come to us and they have these techniques and they don't really trust them because they've mm. never proven that they work, you know, or they go, oh, that doesn't work. And we go, why doesn't it work? And mm. then they go, well, it just doesn't work. And I go, well, it doesn't work for you. And they go, yeah, it doesn't work for you, me. But and they don't go, know how to apply it And I go, it that's properly. because you either don't know it, you don't know it very well. And I remember speaking 
to a technical analysts association in New Zealand. I was over there and, you know, this guy was going, this technique doesn't work because I was talking about it. He goes, oh, that doesn't work, blah, 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 blah. And I look straight at him and I say, well, that, oh, there's one or two things is happening. Either you have no idea what you're talking about or if you never learned it properly mm. because I use it every single day and it works. Mm -hmm. He didn't ask me a question anymore. And at the end of the night I found out he was New Zealand's best technical analyst. Mm. So, and the president of the association there, he goes, well done, Dale, that was really good. You put him back in his place. Oh. I said, I wasn't trying to do that. I was just saying he's learned it the wrong way. Mm. And so he's blanketly saying it doesn't work, whereas he's learned it the wrong way. If you learn it the right way mm. and it's a good technique, it'll work. Exactly. But I find that so many people miseducate themselves by not spending the money to get a good education. They go to the University of YouTube learn all these crappy techniques or learn the wrong way on those techniques mm. and think they're doing it the right way. And it's, again, you, what you don't know is you don't know. That's right. So, and unless you have people like us saying this is the right way yep. and we check people, and this is the beauty of our course is you have, they have, our students have to prove to us they, they can not only know the techniques and apply the techniques but apply them in the right context mm. and, and use so them important. successfully before we give them the tick. Yeah. And we keep working to them till they get it. That's why our success mm. rate is exceedingly high with students. Mm. You know, like other educators in the stock market don't get anywhere near the success rate we do mm. because we work so hard with our students. We take it mm. seriously. Even with my book, we talk about test this stuff. Then you can get into that step two, which is what you're talking about, is paper trade. Mm -hmm. Prove to yourself you can make money before you start pulling back from your work. And start trading the marketplace, and but some people say now that's important, and that often gives people the confidence to do it. The only thing that I want to mm -hmm. raise about this that's sort of like you've got to look at the seesaw side mm -hmm. of things here, because when people first start preparing themselves for you know to to leave the workforce, there's a whole lot of thought processes going on. Some people mm -hmm. are just dying to get out, and they'll you know maybe leave too soon before they've actually prepared Lots properly. Of people do that. And others actually really procrastinate. So I had a call from someone, I remember, they called me one year and it was like two or three years later they rang me up and said, oh, they're still at work because they're, they're, they were going to leave and retire mm -hmm. um, and they wanted to start trading. But then something happened at work and they got into an interesting project and then they're still there three years later. Um, so sometimes that can happen to people, but it can. I just think that if people are working through that um, process and they're doing the paper trading properly, it it's a process of proving to yourself what you need to know. That's what paper trading is yeah. about. It's yeah. not like it's not like you and I telling them and then they're not internalizing it. Mm. It's it's proving it to themselves, isn't it? Well, there's a whole thing is yeah. I mean, obviously a lot of brokers will have demo accounts, mm. so they they'll give you a. And even the ASX, if you go to asx.com.au, they have a trading game. They mm -hmm. give you a fictitious $100,000 that you can trade for three months. Mm. Works perfectly. Great game and mm. to me. And you set up these paper trading or these demo accounts and you use, mm. do all the paperwork, all the research you've got to do and start trading and prove to yourself that it works. And I know to me it's just dumb risking your hard-earned money before you know that you can do it. Mm. You know, it's like, you know, um, any sort of pursuit in life, why, unless you know you can do it, if it's dangerous, mm -hmm. like, you know, yeah, like swimming with the crocodiles or something like that. Don't which go I've done. And, yeah, which you've done. But, I mean, don't go doing it unless you know and that And there wasn't a lot safe. of preparation for that. <laughs> yeah, but, <laughs> but I checked out the gear beforehand. You checked out the gear beforehand. <laughs> yeah. But it's the same thing here. But it's important to practice mm. so that you are prepared for everything that's going to happen, whether the market goes mm. up or down. And some people say to me, oh, Dale, I don't, I just do my money on the market. You know, you can't learn when your money's not at risk. And I go, that's yes, bullshit. You mm. Absolutely you can because you need to test your application of the techniques. And they go, well, I can see what they're saying though, because the psychology side of it is 80%, 20% techniques, but you'll still feel it when you're learning. It's like when we go through the Optimus software that we give people when they're doing mm -hmm. the course and we... I love those things, the exercises we do when we do workshops and oh, yeah. and we put the charts up and we run through or we do a dry run of a stock and use the training manager and increment mm. the bars along. You know, there's always those ooh, ah, as we're going through that because people are seeing the bars unfold, seeing mm. the trades unfold and then sometimes it goes the other way and, you know, and everybody feels it when we go through that process and it's the same with the paper trading side of it because I think when you're going through that paper trading side of it, you're thinking about 
you know, what you could mm-hmm. potentially make, especially when you've already decided that yeah. your goal is to leave your job and start working um, yep. or trading for yourself in the stock market. And so you're thinking that those trades that you're going through can it, were actually, re- it almost feels like this is real because it's it does the start feel like of the it's journey. Real. Yeah. But what my thinking with those people that said, oh, I, I'm, mm. you only test with your money on the market because that's the only way you test your psychology. Well, I know it's true if you to have an a, lo- yeah, it is true to an extent, but if you have a losing trade, mm. does that affect your psychology negatively or positively? Look, for people starting out, sometimes it's a real test of their psychology and they will often yeah, think- Yeah, but is it negative or positive? You have a losing trade. From you and I, point of view, it's a positive thing because they have to have no, those I'm talking about from their point of view. They're testing their Oh, trading. it's a negative okay. in the beginning, yeah. Is it more negative than a winning trade is positive? Is it more negative than a- uh, Look, yeah, it's probably more negative than a winning trade yeah, positive. Well, so yeah. science proves that if you have a negative experience, mm. it's like 10 times more worse, mm. 10 worse- Worse is not ten a times, worse word, is it? Ten times more worse, impact. It has ten times more impact than a positive thing. Mm. So when you're trading with, when you're trying to learn and trying to test your rules, if you have losing trades, it impacts your psychology negatively, mm. you know, around ten times more than what it does for having a positive win. And that's why we say to people, paper trade, paper trade, make trading boring, paper trade. So that you don't get those so that, dips. So you don't get those dips. So when you do go onto the marketplace, yeah. Your psychology is such that you know your rules mm. will work and then you're going to have more positive experiences than negative ones. But the negative ones, you know, that's just part of trading that you're going to lose. Mm. So you're already prepared for that. So Look, that's, I, I actually think that there's a step sort of, you know. Uh, step 1.5. Is well, look, for people who have already traded, if, if you're talking about this from the point of view of people who have never traded, like, you know, I agree with it, but, and I'm going to be putting myself out on a limb here, <laughs> Sitting next to you, I'm a fair, we're a fair way away from each other. I can still kick you from yeah, here. Yeah, I know that's what I'm looking at. Um, and I was thinking that you mm-hmm. know if they're if they're um, so called paper trading, but they're they're actually trading with a very small amount of money that's so dumbed down that it doesn't even register. Um, there's a benefit I see in that if it just starts to so they bring it right back. So so if they were but losing, that's step number four you're talking about now. Well, that's what you think, and I'm just suggesting that. You know, if they're paper trading, it yeah. could be that they're putting a, a very, very small amount on the market so that they're actually looking at the paper trading and the analysis and then, but it depends if they've traded before is what I'm trying to say to you. Because someone who's traded before understands, you know, they've had that experience in the market. It may not have been the right experience, but they've got the experience. They know how to put trades on. They don't have to think twice. Because mm-hmm. when you're new to the market, you really, you have to break down the steps as even more because you don't even know about putting trades mm. on the market and whether you've, you're worrying about pressing the right button more so than yeah, but what's – that, whereas someone who's already got the experience, account. right, if they just put a very small amount in, so say they put a $500 trade on because, you know, 10%, that's 50 bucks. a good lesson, you know, learning, okay, I traded with this strategy, I had money in the market – I'm only going to make a small amount. I'm only going to lose a small amount, but it's just enough to keep my mind through that process that when I put a trade on in my spreadsheet mm-hmm. and it, I've just opened a trade in my spreadsheet, I'm back testing it, but I'm also trading what I'm back testing and I'm keeping it completely black and white in the marketplace. Mm-hmm. Now I've just opened the trade in my brain. The processing is connecting all of those steps together. That that's my mm. whole process. Do you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're so saying. So from a from a m- mindset and a con- and a, the mental side of it, um, I think that doing that for someone who's already had experience in the market would work better. But if somebody has experience in the market, has been trading the wrong way, and they're learning new techniques, paper trading is still perfect for them. Yeah. Okay. They shouldn't. They still should be paper trading the new technique to get confidence in the technique, and that they know perfect practice doesn't th- make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. I think the def- difference about what I'm trying to say is that there'll be people out there who will, you know, because they've got that gam. Some of them have got that gambling some mentality do. Not because. All of them you know, they've been trading in a way that's sort of more gambling than anything else mm-hmm. and that people know in themselves whether they've got that in them, you they know, do. whether they do. They do. And if they do, then it, it may just be that what you're saying is right. They're better mm-hmm. off if they feel that, that they are better off just sticking solely with the paper trading and not put any money on it at all because mm-hmm. that would give them a different sense and understanding of mm-hmm. their own emotions 
because they couldn't put a trade on. Do you see what I'm saying? Well, like, they learn a lot. They're learning a lot more mm. from the psychology point of view just in doing that. I think mm. a lot of people underestimate that yeah. benefit that they would get, which oh, could do. be worth tens of thousands to protecting them and giving yeah. them the training that they need because of their ego, you yeah. know. I mean, we, I don't know how many times we say, you know, slow is fast. Mm. You know, take the step one step at a time. Take deliberate steps. It's like practicing anything, whether it's a musical instrument. Yes. Do it slowly, do it deliberately, do it perfectly slow, and then you speed up. And mm. it's the same with trading. You know, if I'm, you know, learning to play a new song, I learn it really, you know, on my guitar, it's like learn the notes, learn mm. the chords, learn it, play, play it really, really slow speed, get all the changes right, get everything running. And then slowly build it up to tempo, and it's yep. like, and it's exactly the same with trading. So, to me, is because paper when you when you're learning, that. right, mm. you're going to essentially be doing paper trading, but the stocks you're doing it based on the history. Yeah, but Janine, that's boring. Going so slow. What do I do? I need to trade fast. I need to make money. Well, that's it, and that's what a lot of people say. You can't yeah. you can't stop people from doing damage to themselves or their Correct. psychology, sometimes you've just got to let them go and then bring so them back a bit. Do you want to go broke fast or slow? That's pretty much what I answer them. Do you? <laughs> if they're going to do it that way, if you're trying to do it fast. But again, step number four is start small and grow. So mm. what we're leading to is obviously you're getting educated, you know, paper, uh, mm. paper trading and all that. Now, to me is start this is small a good one. and grow. And I is think this, this actually is, step three? This is, this is one of the key things that we need to look at because – Often people start to put in more money than what they're comfortable with. Mm. And what I mean by that is it challenges their psychology. So when you, what I mean by start small, and this is for people that we teach to trade full-time and replace mm. their income, is to let's just start with an inconsequential amount. And you basically said that just before, mm. whether it's $500 and if it goes down 20%, you don't care, it's fine. Mm. You're, you're okay with that. You can sleep at night and it's called that sleep factor. But keep, and I often say to people when they finish our diploma course and they start going, what's the next step? And I said, well, you've learned how to trade in mm. that, okay? The next year is learning how to be <laughs> the trader. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, well, you, you've been spending 12 months being a student mm -hmm. with a student hat on learning to trade. And I went, yeah. And I said, yep. now you have to be the trader placing the trades. Mm. So let's start off with inconsequential amounts. If you're not somebody who's used to trading, you know, if somebody's never traded in their life before, mm. you know, so we go, okay, we'll put 500 bucks on. Yep, and we'll do that for, do that for so a few times. For get your process right. Get your yeah. trading right. Making sure you're placing all your buys mm. and sells correctly, doing your analysis correctly and all your paperwork correctly to work that. And then let's slowly grow the amount that you put into your position sizing and let it let that build and go and, con and, and compound. Yep. And as you're – confidence grows, then your position size can grow mm. because it's that first year to me is not about making money. It's about becoming the trader because mm. we'd always talk about be, do, have, you know, be the trader, do what the trader does and you'll have what the trader has. Mm. So if your goal is to be a, you know, trade for a living, then your decisions need to be, what does a trader who trades for a living do? And you need to make those decisions now. And that's again, Okay. What I say so many people do, they base their trading on their, their future based on what they did in the past. Okay, let's talk about an example. Yeah. Now, there was a lady who I worked with some years ago and she had a couple of hundred thousand to invest. Yep. Okay. Now, I said to her, what amount are you actually really comfortable with, you know, in the market when yep. you first start? Mm -hmm. And she did a lot of work. She sent me some information. She'd worked it all out and she said, oh, $60,000. And she discussed it with her husband and yep. they'd agreed that that was a good starting amount. Yep. So she'd worked out what she was going to be risking on each trade and she felt that, that she was comfortable. She'd traded before mm -hmm. and she'd done all her analysis. So she was ready to go. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she said that, I said, well, what is going to be the process that determines that whether you can transition to a larger figure? She mm. thought about that for a while and she said, well, I need to generate a certain return from that um, capital before I'm willing to put more money in. Okay. I said, okay. So in the first year, her goal was to achieve 10% out of her trading. Okay. And then she was actually going to build it up. And I said, okay, then how much are you going to build it up by? And she felt that, you know, if she built up her um, portfolio by 10 or 20%, that that would be a reasonable jump for her um, to grow, you know, what she was investing each time. She 
she said she wasn't comfortable just after the first year putting the whole lot in. Mm. And I said to her, what if the market's really bullish in the year that you're trading? She said, oh, that means I'm going to do really well and it would more or less guarantee, you know, my return. She'll get 20% or 30%. Yeah, I said, well, look, for a start, it doesn't guarantee your return. However, mm. you're more likely, obviously, to hit the market and, like you say, exceed it. Mm. And so then, but what if the first year was the market was a down year? Yeah. Right? And so that means- What a challenging year like we've had with COVID and things like that. That's right. But mm. she would still get the experience of the trading for yeah. that 12 months, but- mm. um, the chances of her making uh, the, the return if the market was down is small. It's lower, yeah. Right. So, yeah. you know, is it that that would then mean that she should stick with that thinking that not increasing the positions in the market, she's had all that experience for that year. So then how does how does she think about that? And that was just a really interesting discussion it would have been to very have with her and, and just something interesting for her to think about. But because it seemed a bit too complex for her at the time. She just decided to keep it simple and say, well, you know, if I don't get the 10% return, I'm not going to increase my position. Simple as that. So well, but I don't think how- it's as simple as that, but mm. I think it's good, you know, because I mean, how many times, I mean, we talk to traders all the time by saying it's not about whether each trade is a win or a loss. It's about trading well, which mm. is following your plan. Yep. If you follow your plan and your process, the, the outcome probability suggests you'll make money over time. Yeah. Um, and that's really what we talk so about. So therefore there could be a box that she ticks that says mm. um, I actually decided up front that I was going to trade in a mm. black and white way, buy when my back-tested rule said buy and sell when my back-tested well, rule said sell. That's what trading should be. If you and want to, then she spe- mm. she's able to tick off at the end of the year, did I do that for each trade I took? Yeah. Uh, and if she did, then she in reality she's graduating at the end of the 12 months isn't she she's absolutely and that's the thing is that's why I, with trading for living you mm. need to make trading unemotional mm. and that's why i say you know it should be boring basically making money should be boring mm. it's basically doing the same thing and getting a result and and somebody <laughs> only said to me the other day you know uh, the, on an email one of our students they go dale you're just so unemotional when you're talking about Mm. Your trading and your stuff and your houses. And I, you know, I, I talked about um, uh, the other day I was talking about, I was chatting to somebody uh, about me dealing with a real estate agent in Queensland who's managing a property for us. And we've had their property for 15 something years or whatever it is. I don't know how many long it is. And this agent was so gobsmacked that I've never even seen the house. I've never even walked inside the house. All I saw was an empty block of land before it got built. Mm. And there's other persons going, how the hell do you do that? And I went, mm. it's just an investment. That's it. Mm. It either makes money or it doesn't. I don't give a rats what the front door looks like mm. as long as it makes money and that's what we're like. And to me, that's what I'm, why I'm getting that is, is that's what trading should be like. It doesn't matter whether you trade BHP or Westpac or West you Farmers or Coles. Who, I don't mm. give a rat which the stock is as long as it fits my portfolio and it gets the outcome that we want. Mm. And that's obviously we're talking about, you know, we, we've talked in, talk about start small and grow. The next step is about monitoring and adapting that whole process. Mm. So taking what you're talking about is this lady is spending 12 months, you know, being that trader and proving to herself that she could do it mm-hmm. and that her rules were working and she put a a, um, a target of 10% onto that. Now, whether she got that on more, we don't need to discuss that. But at the end of the day is at the end of the 12 months, she can make an assessment, what did I do? Was I the trader? Did I follow my process? Did I follow my plan? Now, how do you think she hmm. would have felt if the market was actually down in that first year? Well, it depends on how she took it. If the market was down and she still had her good trading plan and good trading strategies, she followed her their plans and the plan says that you will get X and she got X and maybe let's say she got 7% or 5%, she can look at it and go, well, the market went mm. down 20% and I've made 5%. That's mm. pretty good. Mm. So you can look at it because every day goes past in the market, you get more data and as you put more trades on and you do more things, you get more experience, more knowledge and more confidence in what you're doing. And so even though if the market fell 40 or 50% and you only lost 5 and 10%, that's a good mm. result. So therefore she may have taken that. And this is about that, that this next step is monitoring your process mm-hmm. and your progress on your trading strategy, but also adapting to that and adapting your trading plan and your trading strategies because 
Do you trade the same in a bull market as you do in a bear market as you do in a sideways market? Well, you've got to have a process and that's all. The process should mm. be the same. It's just the rules that are going to change. Correct. And so that's what you do. And so mm. that's what I was saying really early in this podcast is that you need to trade for a bull bear and a sideways market. Mm. Otherwise, you really don't understand trading. Now, if somebody's listening to this podcast in their car and, or on the way to work or whatever else, you no. Know, um, they be thinking about that. They're like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because mm. you do need to test yourself in all markets. But if you, I mean, if you are listening to this podcast and you want to watch Jenny and I do it, you can get onto um, YouTube because we do these podcasts on YouTube. We record them mm -hmm. on camera. So just go to YouTube um, and type in Wealth Within TV and you can watch Janine. She's in a beautiful red top. Now there's um, one more step in, in all mm. of this. Yeah, I know. There's okay, one more. Okay, so we said monitor and progress and adapt your plan. Well, you know what the last step is? What's that? Ah, this is the last step because we celebrate. Not, well, no, that's no, not the celebrate. <laughs> the last step is if you're trading while on. Are you telling got, me they shouldn't? No, we we celebrate all the way through. You know, all the little wins all the way through, and all the things you're doing. The last step is probably the most critical because when you go to give up your job, mm. is now you have pressure of making money from another source. Mm. Anybody can get in the car or get on the train or the bus and go to work mm -hmm. and show up at nine and go to five and they get paid just by showing up. Mm. Regardless of how productivity your productivity is, you just you know you're going to get paid. Unless they're week. business owners. Unless you're the business owner and then you get whatever's left over. And sometimes that's a lot and sometimes that's not much. But your point I thought is, you're supposed to pay yourself first. No, but if, if people if people knew that every day that they went to work mm their boss would be valuing their work mm. and then oh, they yeah, would get paid based on their before. value, mm. how many people, and so they weren't guaranteed to get the income, mm. they weren't say, well, we're going to pay you. How many people would work like how that? How many people? Nobody Some would work like do. that. Some people do. Some people do. Some people do because they're obviously, you know, if they're getting commissions, that's how they get paid. Mm -hmm. But the vast majority of people would not go to work because they have to rely on going, oh, what have I got? I've got to do this today to get paid. Mm. If I don't do all of that, I don't get paid. So they like. Look, there are a lot of people in industry that get their bonus. They get bonuses based on having achieved certain metrics. So, Correct. And it could be. But they still from get a, a salary. This from is, we're talking a about cleaner a bonus. to a CEO, there's mm. something set up for that. But the point is, trading is that leveler. Mm. You don't, from day one, every day, what you do determines how much you make. Whereas in a job. Well, hang on a minute, because it's don't. what you do on that initial trade. Yeah. Right? Because as you've said to people before, you can't, do, you, you know, you can only make the decision to tr to buy and to sell. Yeah. The rest is up to the market. Correct. So you're not determining what's going on. The market's determining that I'm you're only making that, the call. But as if you've got a, if you've got ten trades on, and let's say even they're the medium term trades, whilst you may not look at the market every day, you're mm. still in those trades and you're still managing those trades. Mm. Your rules may be such that you don't need to look at them every day, but you're still managing those trades. Mm. Every day in theory. So well, what I'm saying is if you had a job, and this is the change in psychology from going from a job where mm. you know that if, as soon as you walk in the door, you're getting paid. And if you don't walk in the door because you're sick, you're still getting paid. You know? Do you think that's why people who go to the market start really, really short term? Because they haven't, they do. they're still connected to that thinking mm. and haven't separated themselves. But mm. people who are actually more adaptable are able to... Um, leave them, you know, trade for medium term and are much better at maybe trading for medium term because they're able to stretch their thinking around that? Uh, they do. And the, the process we take people through to transition from being in a job and being mm. a trader who is working full time or earning their living from working is not just to stop working. So sometimes we'll work with them depending on what their job is. Sometimes uh, it's their health. Well, that that sometimes their health. It. But you mentioned it earlier. Some a lot of our traders will go back instead of working five days a week, they'll work four mm. or three. But not all jobs you can do that with. Yeah. But there's quite a few of our traders, like especially the tradies that we mm, deal with. That's perfect. They for stop them. taking on jobs, so they only work three days a week or four days mm. a week or two days a week. Other people will be consultants and they start taking less jobs or whatever it is, and they pull back on their work week. Other people don't get that luxury. It's five mm. days a week and that's what they mm. do. Those people, what we say to them, if you're going to start trading for a living, then you need to live off your trading. But what we need you to do is you still work for that next 12 months and mm. you put all your wage into a bank account and you only live off your trading. 
So therefore, you still got the security of getting your wage coming in. Or the other way we say to people is for the you need to put the amount of money that you get paid of. in the bank account. We put that into a bank account for the next. But 12 not everybody months. can do that, Dale. You know, they've got no, bills but it's and about expenses. building it up, and that's where mm. we work with individuals to say well, what situation could we be in? Because what we don't want people to do to be under pressure that every week they have to bring in some income. Yeah, because what, we, what we've said to people before is that they just need to be able to cover 12 months of their expenses, right? Correct. And in this market, with the interest rates having been going up and mm. up and up, that's very hard to people for people to to determine what that was going to be because they didn't know when the RBA was going to stop You can have a really rates. good guess at it and, if you, and you overestimate mm. anyway. Mm. So to me, it's about taking that pressure off because if you're under pressure every day mm. to make a certain amount of money every single day, every single week or every single month, then you're emotionally invested in those trades and you start making mistakes. Mm. You start being emotionally challenged with that and chasing the market rather than stalking the market. Yep. And to me, it gets back to that question. If you made your income in one trade a year, a hundred trade a year, what would you prefer? Mm. And one trade a year is better. So to me, it's let's say that you need $5,000 every month to live and mm. you have $60,000 in a bank account. And let's say one month you make $10,000 on the mm. stock market. Well, that $5,000 Extra is, go, is your buffer that goes mm. into, into your bank account and stays Just there. in case the following month because the market's down. You might only make a grand the next month mm. or 2000 the next month, so you're still $3,000 up. But we have to take that pressure off people to think, I have to make this mm. much money every week or every month. Yep. And by doing that, we get so much more success for people because they can sleep at night. And if the market's bad for a month or two months, like we've seen the last five or six weeks mm. you know, into, into this lows that we're seeing here in March, is the people, you wouldn't possibly be well, making any as much time, money. I mean, think about what the market was doing going into the low in the Royal Commission. Mm. The pullback into the GFC, what were people doing in terms Correct. of planning for that was themselves? 18 months of the market falling away. Yeah. So again, you have to look at that and go, okay, how am I trading? Now, there are trading strategies for up and down and leverage trading that we've never talked about yet, mm. you know, which is not necessarily a, a subject See, for people, this podcast. People are feeling, feeling at different times in the market when it pulls back that the mm. market's going to go pear-shaped. Correct. And so that could turn people off thinking that I'm going to walk away from that J-O-B and I'm going to trade the market for a living. But why should it? Because that should actually be one of the best times for them mm. to be preparing, shouldn't it? Absolutely. The best time to learn to trade is when you're not, you're not um, under pressure. Um, under pressure. Mm. It's to trade. Yeah. You know, to, you know... People trade on FOMO all the time mm. and we saw that during COVID. You know, people, oh, FOMO, 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 mm. everybody's trying to trade. You know, and to me that's the wrong time to try and learn. You know, let me ask you a question. If you're an elite sports person at the Olympics and you're there to run the 100 metres, do you start learning how to run the 100 metres on the blocks? Ready when the starter gun's about to go bang? This question's just got right over my head. Well, no, I've been talking about people... When, the when market, you ask me a question, at least ask me something that I can relate to because I couldn't even imagine that. Correct. So find something the, else. Well, what's another analogy? I'm just saying is is when people start to take up trading mm. and want to trade full time or trade for a living is, is when the market's already bullish. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the market's already run. The race is already on the go and they're trying to learn then and then they've got FOMO because they're trying to catch up and trying to do that. But is that the best time to learn? The answer is no. You need to start learning before you get up to the blocks to start the race. Yeah, so I experienced that myself. Yeah. Mm. So to me is, you know, if you're a 100-metre sprinter at the Olympics, you've done hundreds of hours of training and work to get to that line to be ready, to be knowledgeable, to be skillful and to be confident and competent enough mm. to when you run that race, you've got a chance of success. And to me, that's what most see, people don't do in the marketplace. See, the reason I'm going to be really picky here. Oh, you are always picky. The reason I don't like that analogy is because you have to run. only one person can win, whereas in the stock market, that's not the case. So no, everybody just, can win in the stock market. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, see, I know what you're saying about the preparation and all of that side of it. Um, you know, it's really important. That's really what you're trying to tell people to do, isn't Correct. it? Correct. To just be really prepared for going into this. But everybody's this. making excuse nowadays, oh, interest rates are up and... You know, cost of living's up, energy's up, blah, blah, blah. People can't and they're saying, really... I don't want to learn. I don't, I can't afford to no, learn now. I think now because that's so, it's quite negative out there at the moment, but I think mm -hmm. because the market's falling and people are thinking, oh, well, 
I'm just going to stay away from it for a bit because I'm less likely to make money out of it. But it's all excuses to me. It's all about when the economy's better, I'll learn how to trade. When we're not in a recession, I'll learn how to trade. Or when this happens, I'll learn how to trade. And it's like, no, they're all just excuses mm. to me. Is if trading for a living is something you want to do, start yesterday. Mm. Because the longer you wait, the longer it's going to take. And when we get into a bull market, when do you know we're in a bull market? And then the bull market's already a third or halfway down before you figure it out. And then you go and start to learn and then it's going to take a while to learn and by that time the bull market's over. See, I actually think now in having this conversation with you that yeah. we could actually make it even easier for mm -hmm. people because what you're saying is that people are having, you know, we're both agreeing that right now people are probably a little bit yes. more negative but they shouldn't be. They should actually be more optimistic. Be in, great time to learn, a great time to get now. into the market and great time to be better. But I think there's some things that they can start doing before they even – yeah. call us to say, right, I'm ready to get educated. Okay. And? And that is they can sit down and say, okay, how much is it that I would need to put aside yeah. to be able to give up my job right now? If, if Dale and Janina are suggesting that you've got to put away 12 months of your expenses. That's what we generally suggest people what do. What does yeah. that mean that I need to be able to make? And how much capital could I access if I needed to access capital? Because people mm -hmm. can access capital in different ways. Yep. So really explore those areas first and really have that understanding and then be thinking about, well, Dale's just saying that it could take two to five years to learn to trade. That means that, you know, if I start now when the market's down, I might actually have an opportunity to trade while the market's rising. You'll be ready. Always be ready. And then what's the commitment? Okay, so let's look at the timeline for that. So the timeline yeah. is okay, I need a little bit of time to work things out. So let's say that it takes them a couple of months to get their head around, you know, they've written, maybe they've documented their why, they've worked out mm. what their expenses yep. are, they've sat down with their partner to say, look, this is what the long-term plan is. They've um, decided that this is how much capital they could potentially access when they're ready to do it, but they're not needing that, you know, obviously straight away. They've got 12 months that they need to actually plan for to learn how to trade and then potentially another 12 months to get experience in the market yep. outside of that. Could be with paper trading or a little bit of uh, money in the market as well as that. And how much money would you be able to put aside or start saving now so that you've got some money, not just for the education, which is obviously the first um, you know, f amount that you've got to invest, but then it's what you're going to invest after that first 12 months to with the plan. Yeah. So just map it all out. And then if it's two to five years, so in the second year, the theory is if the market's going up, you should be making money making then. Your motto, yeah. And if we're looking at what the market's doing right now and where we're thinking things are going, the market's going to be up yeah. in a couple of years. Easily. It's going to be bullish. And it's probably going to be one of the bullish, most bullish yeah. rises that we've seen in the market for yeah. a long time. And people Even are though, going to wait for 12 months. They're going to miss out on that. Yeah, because the, mo the you know, what I was saying to someone, I think the other day, I might have even said it to you, I can't remember, but the the um, the darkest hour is right before dawn. Yep. So when everyone's thinking that everything's bad. Uh, that's where Buffett says, start preparing. buying doom, selling boom. So mm. now's the time to get educated. And to me, uh, how many of our experts that we interview for Talking Wealth would help people now? Mm. I mean, we did a, a oh, well, I did, sorry, not you and me. I did a seven steps of success in trading video. It was an hour long video mm. of Seven steps to how to become oh, successful. Look, some of those talking wealth interviews could help people with their mindset Absolutely. around preparing it. So it's about getting yourself set right and and then find a few really good ones on talking wealth that you really resonate with. And then they're the things that you actually play to yourself. So if you're having doubts at any time, you mm. just go back and you listen to those over you're and over again. Make a little library I, for yourself. I've had so many students emailing in who are subscribing to talkingwealth.com. I mean, for $3.50 something cents, uh, what is it, a week or something? Not even. It's mm. like, seriously, it's less than a cup Look, of coffee. I was just having But they're a, learning just, so much and they're getting yeah. so much motivation out and so many practical hints and tips to help them in multiple areas of their life, not just investing, but also mindset in health, in business, in yeah. entrepreneurship and giving them that. It's garbage in, garbage out. So put mm. positive in. We, yeah, we, we just watch trash chat, TV all the I time. I was having a chat with one of our lovely people in the business today mm. and she was talking about how she stopped listening to certain songs. Yeah, because some of them are bad. Because it's affecting her thinking. You know, she mm. knows that when it makes her feel something that's not helping her in a positive way, that mm. she's it's inputs and outputs, isn't it, right? Yeah. Um, so therefore, that's a really good decision to make is to try to find lots of things that are actually going to help you in a positive way. Yeah, you listen to positive things, mm. read positive things, 
watch positive mm. things and things that will uplift you and help you and teach you. And that's what talking loss is all about. And I think, you know, if you want to be more successful, attract more, um, a better lifestyle or more, more better relationships. And there's so many different areas that we talk about in talking wealth with all these experts from around the world. It's freaking phenomenal. You're talking, talking wealth TV. Talking wealth TV. Yes. So just go to talkingwealth.com, subscribe, mm. even just subscribe for 12 months and there you go. Cause I can guarantee you for the, whatever it is, a hundred something dollars a year, like you'll go, wow, that was dirt mm. cheap for what I got. I'm learning from the best experts in the world. And these are not, Pseudo experts, they're real experts who know what they're doing, who work with people on the cold face one-on-one every single day to get more of something in their life. And that's, again, it's like I said, you have to give up something to get it. So here you have to give up a tiny little bit, little bit of money, but a bit of time to watch the videos. I was just so passionate about it because Mm. I thought, you know, when, and and this all started coming together when um, COVID hit. Yeah. And, you know, all of the businesses that this sort of – environment and this pl- one place that you can come to to find yeah. everything that you need and lots of information. I thought, well, that mm. is going to help not just the businesses but help all of those people yeah. that need it the mm. most. Mm. Mm. So anyway, so let's, I mean, let's just to wrap up this. We've talked a bit about um, number one is getting educated. We've talked about, um, you know, paper trading. We've talked about starting small to grow, monitoring and adjusting or you're adapting mm. your trading plan. Then we've talked about and step five was, you know, getting or making sure you put enough money in it, working out, putting enough money aside so you're not emotionally under pressure when you start to trade full time, you know, live on your trading and not your wage mm. for 12 months to prove that you can live full time on trading. Yeah. Uh, and th- in that one, we really do work with students one-on-one there with our, mm. with our services and help them work some of this stuff out so that they have the right steps and processes, but we're holding their hand through that. So if you are somebody who's thinking about doing our course, don't think about it, just do it. Because I guarantee it's going to be the best decision you'll ever make. And yes, I can be, you know, you can say, oh, Dale, you're biased. Yeah, I am biased, but we just bend over backwards to help you get you what you want. So if you want to trade for a living, then get into our diploma course. Just go into our website, wealthwithin.com.au, go to the education tab, click on that, download the information, talk to our team because they're all traders and they'll be able to help you. But I think mm. we've probably covered all the five steps. But look, I think this has been a really, really – not, it's enjoyable for me having a chat to you in this nice informal setting, but I think what we're getting from our our, our listeners is saying, wow, mm. they're just really enjoying us just chewing the fat, if that makes sense. Yep. You know, it's just you or me having a glass of water and just and really dumping that stuff out of head. But what I'd like to say just to wrap this up is, is don't try and think you have to eat an elephant. This mm. is one step at a time. This is put one foot in front of the other because being a trader is not, I mean, that you just click your heels and you end up in Kansas. You know, mm. it's not, you know. But at some point you've got to sort of set a timeline yeah. for yourself and say, well, look, yeah. you know, in three months' time, I'm going right now, this month, mm. I'm going to do, you know, two things. It could be something towards this plan of yours yeah. that you want to do. And then this is what I'm going to do next month. And in the third month, maybe the third month is when you're going to contact us and say, look, I'm ready to do yeah. the course now because I've prepared myself for this and I know exactly what I want to do. That's exactly what I was about to get to. It's like, you know, I often say to people, it's not about, you know, yes, it is about where you're going to, mm. you know, whether it's trading for a living. I say, but today you've got to decide what can I do today? And then what can I do tomorrow? Yeah, because the timelines there. We don't after. care when they start, do we? I don't we? care I mean, when you start and, and not... what it is, but it's their time frame. Mm. But again, but every single student that talks to me wish they'd started a long time before they actually mm. started. And that's the big, big common denominator. So I would urge you, if you are thinking about learning, just do it and take that first step. But as you said, Janine, it's like, well, what is the plan? Oh, I'm going to start the diploma in three months. So, okay, what do I have to do today? Mm to help me and what do I do tomorrow and the next day and the next day to get to that point where I can yep. do that. And, and if we don't plan, we don't yeah. get, you know, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. So mm. um, I think I've um And we want them myself. to be successful. Hey? We want them to be successful. Absolutely. We want them to have positive experience and be successful. But I think hopefully people have got the idea of what the process is to be trading for a living. Mm. Uh, and again, it's not necessarily day trading. All that no, sort we're of not stuff. talking about but the strategies yet as to what no, you could do. But, um, but that's fine. So mm. hopefully you've enjoyed this podcast. Again, you can watch us on YouTube. Just go to YouTube to go. When you open up YouTube, just type in Wealth Within TV. You'll see Janine and I there and you'll be able to watch this podcast. Head over to talkingwealth.com and subscribe there. It's a wealth of knowledge that will really put a lot of positive, great stuff in your head. And 
ideas about how you can get more success in your life, whatever that is to you. But thank you for you've been uh, listening to Talking Wealth here with Janine Cox, our Senior Analyst at Wealth Within, and myself, Dale Gillam. I'm the Chief Analyst here. So, But for now, goodbye, good luck, and good trading.